What's up, people? Welcome to this week's episode of the Indian Doctor Podcast. I am very high on Diet Coke, and Gurren is yamming some dirty cough sweets I've never heard of in my life. Kantika! Kantika! Can you say it? Can you say it? Kantika! 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 Yeah. Oh, shit. Kantika. Here we go. Theme for the podcast alert, yeah. You may want to adjust your volume for Gurren coughing in your ears. You speak, and I will listen. No, I've, I've, okay, for a little context, guys, my brother and sister and, my, my sister and brother-in-law came by to come and say hi to me at my new house, flat in London. So, I'm a little bit hyped up my energy because I've been yamming Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. And Goran wants me to carry the podcast. I'm a bit socialised out, man. you got to carry it this week. What's going on? Pull I'm your coughing, weight. man. I'm unwell. How do you find this like car thing? I feel like you. No, thanks. How do you I find this car like thing? I've never heard of it. Yeah, very effective. Um, it's, basically, it's basically this black little ball. Right? Don't know what's in it. Don't really care. You don't eat it. You just stick it in the back of your mouth and you just leave it there. And it, and it just, just dissolves. Spread. Well, yeah, over like a few hours. But it just suppresses the cough. A few hours? Wow. Jesus. It suppresses the cough. Where would you get it from? India? Of course. Huh? Of course. Yeah. I've you can see the special, special packaging here. It's uh, foil. <laughs> yeah. And see when I walk when I'm walking around the hospital, it's in my pocket and you hear this. Like tic tac. Yeah, and everyone thinks it's tic tac. I'm like, no bro, it's Kantaka. You don't want to try this, it can ruin your throat. It's like fisherman's friends. <coughs> fisherman's friends and lockets and all of them. You know the really oh, strong no, ones? No, was no, it no. holes? Holes is what oh, kills your throat. The my burn. god. Holes was the airwaves of the throat. Remember airwaves for knock. Mm. You had that, you look. I remember the first time I had it, Airwaves. It was from my brother in the car. He always had chewing gum when I was growing up, mm. uh, which Whoa. made me conscious How of bad breath. I was about like 14, 15. If you've never had it and you have it, you think it's like normal, and then you get this like. No, I had it and I tried it and I was like, this is burning. My eyes were like. Yeah, yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, my yeah. nose was like, I was like, what have you done? He's like, it's cool. Just, just, just. It'll be ride fine. the wave, man. Yeah, ride, ride the wave. The wave. <laughs> Acting like I'm on some kind of weed high or something. Yeah, but it was crazy. I was like, man. That was something else. And since then, you're never going to get that high. Do you remember how you always said to me, you'll never get the memory of having the first time you had a Coke? Well, I got the memory of when I first time I had an airwave, mate. That's very entrenched in my head. It's not that you went to the memory. You can, re- you can recall the memory. It's if you have an airwave now, it'll never be as good as the first time. It won't be. But that was also painful. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite similar to, I didn't know what wasabi was. Wasabi? Mm, not the restaurant, the actual, the actual wasabi. What actually is wasabi? Do you know or you don't know? I don't think I know, no. It's, like, it's basically Japanese spice. Okay. Which the restaurant is based on. And it's like um, it's like this silver sludgy paste thing. Mm. L- like Japanese chutney, let's say, or chaar or whatever. And so we're in uh, Delhi, me and my mama, we're at the Taj Hotel. This is like before I fly back to England and uh, we go to wasabi, right, to have lunch. And uh, this dish comes out. And I see this thing... And I just eat it in one go. I don't know what you it was. Eat it in one go. And then, uh, this is the only way I can describe it. If, if, guys, if you listen to this and you've had wasabi, maybe you can relate to this. You feel this intense burning and pain. But it goes like, so you eat it and then it goes like up this channel here. What, up your nostril? It just like, yeah, I think into your head and then you're just like, whoa. It's just Euphoria. Like, oh, was, I was like, oh. I just couldn't really yeah have it's some kind nice. of face that you have when you orgasm oh, no, no. Um, <laughs> don't know about that man that's but, the uh, face you made mate <laughs> well, that's a face I made oh, but uh so then my mum was like did you just eat the whole wasabi I was like was that what it was and then yeah that's how I learned so uh, so like oh, airwaves yeah. on ster- airwaves airwaves on steroids but before yeah. we get on what did you say to me just before we came on air might be me being ill and food this Thursday. I can't remember. Continue. Oh, please don't pass me your illness. To which I said? In sickness and health. And to he, which guys, I said, I mean, I'm not married just, to you, bro. Relax. He's, he's newly married. He doesn't understand the way this works. Look, what do we say I'm in our culture? I'm married to my wife. Are you what my do we no, say not. in our culture? You don't marry each other. The family is getting married, okay? Just, <laughs> okay. Jody Hoyet and... Uh, the family. 
That's so true. The sickness and wealth. Yo, I yeah. thought of this the other day. What's the Punjabi word for husband? I know wife is roti. What's husband? Cousin. Cousin. That might be Urdu though. It could be Hindi. I'm not sure. Because when I typed word. it into Google, I've got something else, man. I don't, don't know if you heard this. Hang on. Well, <coughs> husband in Punjabi. I was looking at this the other day. Uh, Bhatti. <laughs> what? Yeah, Bhatti. Oh, no. Bhatti. You're saying it wrong. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's no pati. Uh, in it. Yeah, it's pati. Pati. Yeah. Okay, okay. Two things here. First, I thought you said pati, like the Punjabi no, slang. I know what pati is. Pati means right. I was like, yeah. Right, and I was like, okay, pati. So there's a term which a lot of Asian guys will tease their wives with, and they'll say, "Listen, I am pati Parmeshwar." What does that so mean? So this is so pati. Obviously, husband Parmeshwar is God. So like your husband is like God. It's oh. like this thing within Indian culture. Oh, 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 oh. Like, yeah. So pati, pati. <laughs> Is, is Sanj there? No, she's uh, left for to go for a walk. So she's not there? You can't shout anything out to her? No, I can do. Yeah, I can shout. What do you want me to say? say Sanj, no, just shout at her and tell her. Say, no, no, say, Sanj, your pati is here. Look at me. Look at me. I am the pati now. Yeah? Yeah, right, Captain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Sanj. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On our theme of Dave Chappelle last week, Yes. I'm very excited to announce, guys, that Russell Peters is coming to the UK. I got is a it? message today. I thought you were going to say he's coming on the podcast. I was like, okay, all right. Dave, big Dave. Okay. <laughs> that, time will, that time will come. He'll be like, shit, man. I've been so he's coming to the UK? Okay, when? He's coming next May. Uh, he's sitting in Birmingham, Wembley, okay. Manchester. We'll go see him in Birmingham with you guys. Shout me when the tickets are out. Okay, uh, if you're actually down, I'm buying them on Thursday. They go pre sale. Okay, it's a fine. Tuesday though. We'll it's sort Tuesday. it out after the call. Sort it out after the call. It's a Tuesday. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort it out after the call. It's seventeenth of May. I understand. So, you know, we'll sort I'm keeping it out you committed. After the call. I'm okay. keeping you committed, guy. Guys, you listen to us now. If he flops yeah. now, it's all on him. I have a second party involved called my wife. It has to be yeah. a joint decision when you commit to things, Karen. Like how you said. This is a good point, listeners. I will speak to the decision maker who is Sanj. It's true though. Whenever, whenever someone like I've noticed this recently, yeah. You know when mm. when people message you saying Are you free this day, I'm like, okay, I am, but I'm not going to confirm <clears> yes <throat> because the wife might know something that I don't know about. So I just don't open the message fully until I get home. Then I look through my missed messages with her about meeting up, and I say, Are we free this day? Are we free that it's, day? Um, it's good social etiquette, man. It's but it's I never, I never so... knew. I, I, I. <coughs> I kept thinking people were being difficult, but I was like, no, no, no. You have to run it past your significant other in order to understand what their plans are and be respectful of it. Exactly. It's, yeah. I mean, we have a shared calendar. As Shindy knows and I know. I have the same, um, yeah. So what, uh, what, okay, this is the next level for you. So what I will do as a softener is it'll be entered in the calendar, TBC. So Shindy normally sees that before I'm saying, so like, oh, okay, this, yeah, fine, done. Yeah, but then the TBC could be a month ahead and I'm like, I want to tell you now before I put it in the calendar, because when it's in the calendar, to me, it means it's solidified. Uh, the so plans are TBC. set. There's a color code. Unless it's green, it's not solid. Oh. Unless it's green, it's not solid. <laughs> it's solid, man. It's Got not solid. It's system, TBC. Yeah? Oh, it's all for Maybe like the UK tonight. government with the green, red, and uh, amber. Oh, yeah? mate, COVID learned <laughs> off me. COVID learned off me, man. So, uh, yeah, and then, <laughs> mentioned you have like briefings each day. <laughs> No, the government briefing is 6 what p.m. What time? Tell me what time is 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, no, it could, could, could be any time. We don't have a set time for briefing, but it's like, all right, this is a plan for this day. This is a plan for this week. Uh, these are the key things we need to get done. Um, and in part of that would be social engagements, like with meeting you in Sanchez Thursday. So we kind of made the thing and it was like, right, this is what we're doing. Move this, this and this. Done. It's true. It's true. Having that, having that but, is really important and it helps. But respect. Respect is important. Even if you know the answer... You still ask. Even if I know, you still, you still ask. ask. So this is what I was thinking. What do you think? Th- that's the key phrase, man. Guys, this thing out there. <coughs> what do you think? Or I say, what shall we do? Or what shall we do? Joint decision making. Perfect. Never yes. ask, what do you want? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Going no, dropping no. another lesson of NLP up in here, people. For those no, of you that no. don't remember, NLP well, this, is this little yeah. subtle... Subtle nuances that you can get for people to do things for you. <coughs> in like a little doctor way. I've been doing it uh, the whole time, guys. Indy does all the work for the podcast. Uh, it's not uh, so it's, it's only because you're busy. You know, I'm respectful of your calendar. Fucking hell, we are married, isn't it? Mad. 
Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just clocking it now. <laughs> mm, I told you, man. You just, you... Levels, isn't it? Levels. It's true. It's true. Um, <coughs> what was I going to say? Yeah. What do you want? Even to anybody, the 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 question is too much pressure. People feel overwhelmed when you ask that question to them. There's a really funny skit on um, meme on the internet with I don't know which film it's from, but Ryan Gosling's in there, and he's asking a gun to him. He's like, "What do you want?" What do you want? And she's like, it's not that simple. Oh my God. Like she completely loses it. And then oh, the thing on top is he's like, asking her like, what do you want to eat? No, yeah, no, that's the meme. That's not really what it is. But that is yeah, acting. Yeah. So I say it's a shindy. It's like, it's like when you ask a girl what she wants to eat, it's not that simple. Yeah, like, it is that simple. Yeah. It's like, I want to eat here. Sorry. What yeah. do you want? Anything. Okay. What about this? I don't want that. What about this? I don't want that. Well, you fucking pick it then. Yeah. <laughs> Sanj, I, I have this. that problem <clears throat> with Sanj, but I know guys that do have that problem. Bad. Sanj, I mean, Sanj is very similar to me in the sense that I know she could eat the same thing every day. Yeah. For a year and just be like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <coughs> so that's good. Shindy has a funny thing, not that through the clothes. So she asked my opinion about, should I wear this or this? And then just always is the complete opposite. Why? I don't know. This is just the way Hang on, works. if you play up to that, you could really some mindfuckery here. No, 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 no. Because even, even when I do that, she still, I, I don't know how she does it, man. She, she already knows what she wants to wear. She just wants to... to I don't know what she wants to do. She wants, what, the confirmation bias of what you like, so she picks the opposite of what you, what you don't want her to wear, so she gets happy. I don't know, man. I haven't thought about it at that level, but it's just like, I do my role, I get asked a question, I answer, no, no, no. and then she let's, does what she wants. Let's dissect this a little bit further, yeah? Let's have a look into this. So, okay. Shindy comes up to you and says, I want to wear a dress, or I want to wear leggings, and you say... Right, right, right. Okay, so here's... A, so... I think in her head, she already knows what she wants to wear. Okay. So let's but, say no, she it, has it, predetermined... Let's take, 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 let's take earrings. It, earrings is a really good example. She'll have two earrings and she'll be like, I want to wear this one, this one. And now give an opinion. And if... It, yeah, you're right. It's not always the opposite. And she's like, yes, I was thinking that one. Then it's really easy. Oh, she wants the confirmation prize. If you don't give it, she's already made her mind up. So it's, boom, it's done. She's going to go with yeah, that anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's not so that why one. bother she's asking like, then? Right. Why bother asking that? There you Sorry. go. There asking? you go. Shindy, you're listening. You're listening to this. That is that is content. mental capacity he should be using on other things such as the podcast. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, to guys out there, just just yeah, it's a two two bits of knowledge there. Just ask. Never ask me. what do you want, <laughs> and when asked the question, give a give a reply. Do you know what? I've had to do the same thing with my dad whenever I ask him anything. I don't ask right. him what he wants to do. My sister said, she said to me when I was younger, you give dad bind. two options. Two options. Two options. Yeah. Say, do you want yeah. this or this? And nine times out of ten, he says neither. Right? <laughs> He's smart enough to know that. He's but advanced, advanced NLP. Yeah. Eventually, he, he might be like, oh, I'll just take that one. I'm like, okay, cool. So what you described there is an NLP technique. It's called a double bind. Mm. Both outcomes are what you want. But the illusion is of choice. Yes, the illusion of in, choice. In, indeed, do you want to get together on Friday or Saturday? I don't care what you say, we're still getting together. <laughs> As I say to patients, you want a blood test now or do you want it one hour? You still have a blood test, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's going down yeah. for real, it's just when you say the, so. The illusion of choice. You ain't leaving here until I said so. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't say that to patients, man. That's weird, man. Let's be real, you're you are. You're, you're a creepy ass doctor, man. You're, you're thinking that in your head. You're, you're a like, creepy you're ass You're getting even until you're I shut this blood guy. out of your arm. Do you, yeah. do you know what the first question I ask patients is when I go to see them? This is like my thing. I'm like, do you want to go home? That's the first thing I say. <laughs> what? Right? It's just this thing. And they always and when they say yes, I'm like, this is when I've already predetermined that this one's like, I don't, I don't mess with someone. Who, someone who clearly needs to stay in because they're very well. I'm not going to be like, do you want to go home? But you can't. Like, this is clearly someone who is going to go home but I just I was like do you want to go home they're like yes I'm like that's the right answer I was like I always get worried when people want to stay in hospital right um, but yeah yeah like I said just to preface that guys if somebody's clearly unwell I don't walk up to them and say hey you want to go home because you can't <laughs> oh no 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 I thought yeah. that you were going to say hey do you want to go home if you want to go home you need to do the blood test oh oh that's where advanced, I thought you were going with this advanced technique um yeah, sometimes I can use that when people patients have been a bit obstructive. Then it's like, okay, what is it that you want to happen? What's the outcome that you want to achieve? Mm. Right? Then they say what they want. Then it's like, all right, for that to happen, for you to get what you want, this needs to happen. It's very true. Okay. Mm. Mm. I it's a that. game of negotiation. It's not a negotiation, man. 
you're going to teach me more and more of that, Garen. But guess what I did today? I'll give you one guess. I went to work, but I did something adventurous. Go on. You went to work today, as in you went to the office? I went to the office, yes. This is like 20, 20 questions, 20 more questions, right. Um, oh, shit, okay, <laughs> we're doing this. All right, okay, okay. I'll give you right, 10 right. questions. I've got my hands on 10. Questions. All right. So you would have told me it's at work. That's fine. You don't, that's not a question. Was it a team or individual-based activity? Isn't it meant to be yes or no questions? Yeah, there's two options there, team or individual. No, 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 it's a yes. They're meant to be closed questions. Okay. Did you do something as an individual? Yes. Mm. Okay. Was it climbing? No. Mm. Okay. Um, was it a sport? Class of, give me a definition of sport. Is that the Olympics, basically? Is that, is that what you're guessing on? Okay, you can, yeah, that can be a question. Is, no. is it at the Olympics? It's not the Olympics. Okay. And you said it was something fun, yeah, at the start? Yes, it was fun, yes. And it was fun. Um, is it something based on, like, an arcade? No, but that would have been fun. <laughs> Does it involve a console? No. Does it involve a computer? Not well, a computer, same as console. No, no. Forget that question. Ooh, this is, this is... Guys, you need to give me some help here. So Indy's done something fun at work today, and you said it's not a sport, to be clear. It's not a sport in the sense that it's at the Olympics. Yeah, but it's an activity. You did some sort of activity today. Yes. Which, which is not climbing. Mm, it wasn't playing on a PlayStation or an Xbox or a computer. Mm, you didn't run around on ba- basketball. <laughs> Is that a clue? No, I'm just doing a countdown. Oh, right, right. I was like, what is that? Like, Oompa Loompa song. <laughs> um, I, need, I need a lifeline here, man. Give me a clue or something. Hmm. Thing is, if I tell you any hint, it's going to give it away. Okay, I had, to, I had to dress up. I had to dress up for it. Mm, it's not fencing. That's the first thing that comes to mind. The fencing's in the Olympics. So it's not that. You had to dress up for it. Fancy dress. Indoor skydiving, go karting. Are you asking go-karting. questions or are you just listening? No, to I'm just I'm thinking out loud. Yeah, so go karting, but you wouldn't do it at work, so that doesn't make sense. What the hell would you dress up for at work? All these things that outside work, like laser quest, paintballing. It's not these. Th- but my hands hurt, man. Come on. <laughs> for those yeah, you can't see on audio, I put two hands up. I've now got one hand up, and it's kind of hurting. So, yeah. You had to dress up. Go and hurry up, man. <laughs> it's difficult, it's difficult, man. It's difficult, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I work. You work in an office. Cluedo? No. Why would I dress up for Cluedo? You think I was in real life Cluedo? Probably. Yeah, That's yeah, a good yeah, shout, yeah. actually. I, we mate, should do that at some really point. Great idea. Is it like what you're describing clearly is on a very lesser scale than what I'm describing? No, it's kind of similar. To Cluedo? Well, in the sense like it involves numerous people and a lot of people can do it, yeah, at once. Escape room? No. Dressing up quiz? No. Uh... Just take two shots and let's get this over with. You've got two questions left. Okay, okay, okay. It's not a quiz. It's not in the Olympics. It's not a sport. It is a sport, but it's not the Olympics. That's what you're saying. Yes. It is a sport, but it's not the Olympics. Which bloody sports are not in the Olympics, man? Think. Have okay, you... I'll, get, I'll give you a hint. Think <coughs> go ape. Zipline segue. No, you no. Can't, you can't, you can't abseiling. Oh, my God. Yeah, mate, that's <laughs> climbing. That is climbing. No, it's not, it's not climbing. That's it's climbing. absolutely climbing. Bro, what do you do at the end of climbing? Building. You come down. How is, that, how is that going up a building? I went yeah, down a building. You, listen, you I let the rope go through did. my hand. You go up and then you go down, don't you? No, so you have I to went climb, straight you have down. Climb up. No, I climb didn't climb up. up. I went down. to the top of the building through the elevator <laughs> and then went down. That's pretty so cool. context here. Work had, a, um, work had a sponsored campaign through a brand of uh, some sort. I'm not going to name names. But they offered to sponsor it. I put my name forward and they said I could do it. So I did it. 
uh, had to wear their clothes, sponsor clothes, for their own image. Uh, nice. Went to the top of the building at work and abseiled down it. How tall were we talking? Uh, about six or seven stories, I think. It's quite a sizable so, building. Six or seven floors? Yeah, stories, floors, yeah. So give us like context, like height, like what we're talking. I can't really give you... I, I, I'm not great with height measurements, but imagine, imagine you see an office building... And you've got seven separate floors. That's it. <coughs> so you're talking like uh, the Twin Towers, like that kind of level? Or? That's not seven floors, is it? The Twin Towers is how many floors go? <laughs> Jesus, that's a cool, that's a cool joke. <laughs> <coughs> so, okay, so you, you did it. I mean, it's quite... Uh, I've, I've never it done it before. I've never done it in before, so I thought I'd try <coughs> it. I've done it when I was climbing when I was younger. Mm. That's how you get down. You just yeah, yeah. that way. It was, uh, it was cool. It was nice to do. Did you do the whole keep, thing where you like, do the jump it. and jump and jump? And I, I, jump I asked if I could and they said, no, don't jump. I said, all right, fine. So you did the like... Yeah, you had to step down like... Umpa, yeah. Numpa, Numpa, Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was doing. Did you feel like Tom Cruise? No, but the guy before me, he jumped down and the guy was losing his shit at the top saying, stop jumping, stop jumping. But obviously, if the guy's halfway down, you can't do anything. Like, it's up to him now. Mm. But yeah, abseiling's fun, man. Nice little thing to get off my, uh, I guess it's a bucket list kind of thing, isn't it, for some people? Depends. Oh, right. Which leads to the question, something. would you sure. ever go skydiving? That is an interesting question because we had a quite, I wasn't involved, but I heard about a horrific patient who died in oh, his 30s sh- three days ago in ED who'd come in with some chest pain post skydive a few days before kept complaining of his non-specific pain, observations are stable, and then <coughs> at some point like, he just crashed, and um, they were talking about how when the surgeons came, cardiothoracic surgeons, chest surgeons, they put a needle in his chest, and just a litre of blood just, whoosh, just came straight out. Like, this well, stuff straight out as soon as... Hang on, hang on. It came out of the needle, up the needle, out the other end. In the scalpel, sorry. And the needle is... I meant like, like they were making a nick, I think, to put a chest drain in. Right. And uh, As yeah, he made the just, cut, it then just gushed out. Yeah, like I just shout out alien. Context. Like, yeah, like this is not normal. Like this is yeah, clearly. <laughs> no, no. What I mean is like, okay, yeah, we're in hospital, we see things, but even for us, we're like, whoa, uh, and then yeah, and that was all. For, that was we'd been skydiving. So what happened at the moment? No, I, I don't know. It was like I wasn't involved. I, I heard about it, but didn't hear all the details. So did his heart like explode or something? <laughs> no, no. He's he's bleeding into his chest from somewhere. This is after, <coughs> just after a skydive. Yeah. No, obviously Jesus. it doesn't happen to everyone, but when you hear about it so recently... So, prior to that, yes, I would have done a skydive at some point, obviously in tandem. Um, I'm going to build myself up to maybe do an indoor skydive first. But now... <laughs> now I think I, I need to some time away. I need some time uh, away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I was thinking I'd do it, but I've got really bad ear issues, so I don't know if it's smart for me. Um, because if you climb through that level of altitude so quickly, it might fuck my ears up. So, little trick for yeah. you, <coughs> or for anyone listening. So when you're on a plane, yes, plane goes up, plane goes down. You get that yeah. funny like, oh my god, and all the babies start crying on the plane. Sometimes what? I used to get what? it. What's your hack to keep it not happening? Chewing oh, gum. Sorry. Chewing gum. Okay. okay. Second, the plane's about to take off. Chewing gum. Second, it's about to start descending. Chewing gum. That way it keeps sure. the fluid out of... I don't, know, I don't know if there's any science behind it, but it works for me. Here um, is the science. All you yeah. need to do... Yeah, a lot of people do that. Chewing gum or like sweets and stuff. It's kind of like... It'll give you some satisfaction. The optimal way... Water. What do you mean? So all you need to do... I mean, you don't need water. You can actually just do a dry swallow, but it's easier with water. Once you swallow, what it does is it opens up the pressure. So your nose and your ear are connected. Mm-hmm. by what we call the eustachian tube. Yeah, ear, and nose, and throat. <coughs> yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. And then there's an the eardrum, right? And what's happening is because of the change in pressure, your eardrum is inverting, it's coming in. And to balance it, you need to have some pressure going the other way. Just, and that's what that popping sound is. Oh. When you clear it, right? So the swallow opens it up, that mechanism, balances it out. Like, I learned this as a fifth year medical student when I was sitting with an ENT surgeon. I was about to basically fly to India. I was on my last day of clinic. I was going the next day. I was like, listen, <coughs> how do you stop it? And he's like, yeah, just, just drink something and swallow and you'll be fine. I was like, wow. 
and you never knew that, that man. Do you know what I mean? Like, and now I tell people, I'm like, you didn't even know that little. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, because no one teaches you that stuff. It's not the curriculum. It's not the exam. And then I told, I tell people, and I'm like, listen, guys, what you need to do? Drink some pani, man. And uh, yeah, and like I said, if you don't have it, you just like I just did there. Try solo, pop, done. Mm. See, I had complications growing up because I had grommets and I had glue it. So when I used to go on planes when I was younger, I had really bad you pain. You clearly were just not meant to be here, man. Like your sibling, no. sibling <laughs> said on your wedding, like there was two, there's an 11 year gap. Like I had, <laughs> you come along, you have all these problems. Just like <laughs> It's true, I did. But also yeah. all of us have hearing issues <coughs> in my family. We're all hard of hearing. So it's definitely a hereditary And it's from thing. your mum. Mum, mum. Mum yeah. is clinically yeah. deaf. She wears two hearing aids. Um, yeah, and I was born with glue ears, so you have grommets and naturally as a kid. Um, I've got to have surgery on my left ear anyway. I'm waiting to have that done in a few weeks or months. I'm having a scan done this week, actually, on it. So that'll be helpful. See how bad it is. Uh, yeah, and then after that, I need to build up the eardrum as well because it's so weak it pierced without me doing anything. So I don't think a scar is going to be a great idea for me. Did, did, you go to, uh, did you go to Claire's Accessories and get your eardrum pierced? Oh we man, I wish I did. Can I get my ears pierced and then put it in the eardrum? <laughs> oh man, imagine that. You know what? I'm going to tell my kids that when they want to get the, the <coughs> ear pierced, I'm like, okay, you have to get your eardrum pierced first, then you can get your ear pierced. <laughs> That's the way to put your kid off, isn't it? Mate, they're going to be like bringing social services and be like, yeah, we have concerns about the father here. Uh, I'm not sure what he, he does at home. He's to using bribery eardrums. tactics on his kid, threatening to pierce their ears. Yeah, eardrums, like, bloody. Yo, I was watching a TV show with my uh, niece and nephew now, quickly on TV. You know, do you remember the game growing up, The Floor is Lava? No. Oh. You know the game, you The Floor you, is you Lava. Can't stand, so, so, like, can't stand on so you can't stand on the floor, you got to jump from like sofa to sofa, cushion to cushion. Yeah, 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 yeah. got it, got it. Yeah, they made it into a TV show. <laughs> and I watched it, and Gurren is actually quite addictive, you know, it's really good. Ooh. It shows people like proper failing when they jump thing to thing, and they like face plant. Or they jump and miss and hurt themselves. It's great. It's really good. Is, is it adults? No, it's PG. It's it's on kids Netflix. Um, my niece and nephew love it. No, I watched it with people, them and I was the like, people jumping really around. Sorry, the people who are doing the jumping is it kids or? No, it's it's full fledged adults doing it. And if they get to the other side in, yeah. in a quick enough time against three other teams, they win ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that that's why it's adults, isn't it? It's like Takeshi's Castle. Like, you watch that shit, Garin, and you're just I, like... Has, has, has anyone ever completed Takeshi's Castle? There's only ever so been, like, hard. three people. It's so difficult. The thing is, it's not even about that. It's just it's the commentary, isn't it? Like, it's just the funniest... <laughs> it's like it's like Japanese Come Dine With Me in terms of, like, you know, the commentary. I've never the watched commentary. Come Dine With Me, you know? Oh, I've man, never got the, into the, it. The commentary is just... It just makes the whole thing, man. And people... You get some people that clearly don't give a shit, yeah? And basically, yeah, there's two parts. There's the cooking element... And then you have to entertain. And some yeah. people like go like really high level. And some people don't give a shit. But the funny thing is, <laughs> it, like if you're you really, it, uh, you have to get the high score at the end of the week. Okay. Fine. But they all score each other. And it's just like, oh, that was a great evening. And, you know, John was great. And then da da da. So that's why I gave him two out of ten. And it's just like, mate. What? <laughs> it sounds like the most petty <laughs> shit ever. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a kiss ass exercise. It's funny, man. You you need to watch it. Like they get some random ass people together, and uh, and the people end, the from like different and... areas as well, right? So you got Dave yeah, yeah, from Peterborough, you got someone from Chelsea, right? Jumping in and doing the different madness on each other. I don't know if it's like that. I think it is regional, so everyone's from that same area. Oh, okay, but, all right. So the wild ones like from Birmingham, and it's just it's just funny, man. So yeah, Takeshi's Castle, come dine with me. It's, it's interesting the stuff we watch, isn't it? But the other day, like yesterday, my sister was saying to me, she was like. There's this Instagram man, I think it's like a young girl, who basically has like 10,000 followers, and all she does is eat her food. Like, she showed me one of the videos, it's like, okay guys, I've got dal and roti and um, rajma, kidney beans, um, Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a bite now. That's it. They sit and watch her eat. Right, right, right. But the funny, the funny thing is, <laughs> I was saying to my sister, I was like, it, it annoys you that people are watching it, but you have this compulsion to watch it as well. Yeah, you <laughs> I was do. Like, I, was you like, do. I was like, you can't, you can't start records. watching it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but coming back to that point, it's weird um, what we watch, isn't it? 
My dad taught me a little hint on the side of that rupti thing. You know when you run out of rupti and you don't have enough and you still got loads of dal to eat? No. Yeah. He uses the last bit of rupti and he just scoops it out and, and sips it out of the rupti again and again and again. That way the rupti lasts for the majority of Until it. the last bite. Until the last bite. What a hack. I never thought of that. That's genius. <coughs> that I just think, nice. yeah, you have to succumb to the spoon now, which is no muzzle. But yeah. That's quite good, actually. I, th- I think, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite irrational when it comes to food. Like, for example, say I've got three things, right? Say I've got like a sandwich, crisp, and some fruit. Mm. It has to be rationed in equal proportions for that last burki. No, so I'll have a little no, bit of sandwich, a yeah. little bit of thing. I know no. you, you eat like one of everything and one of the other, but mine has to be <laughs> yeah. rationed down. And there was a point when I was, this is when I was like a lot younger, very young, where like in that dal situation you were describing, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to have to go for the dal now with a spoon. I was yeah. like, I just need to, I was like, sometimes I pinch my nose or just like, I just go for it. And he'd be like. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have breaths in between bites. Why not? Do you, do you not enjoy it? No, but that was a you know that's a time where you just it was like a chore to eat. I, I was like oh, that you have to I was, just I wasn't very yeah, yeah. I wasn't a very good eater, and so yeah now now I enjoy it now now it's fine isn't it? Like you can do so well, many more. Nor things. was I. I was really fussy as a kid, but I don't, I think godwara tals don't help, guys. For those of you that don't understand, a godwara tal is basically this metal tray and it's got mm. segments of food in it. So right. you have Why segments for each different thing because essentially, if you're a kid and you like. Every kid likes their food to be, like, separate. Oh, right. And so, here's so the best this, example. Is, this is making it worse because you kids it's okay to do that. Mata paneer. Mm. So, guys, this is cheese and peas in this study, this uh, gravy sauce, right? Yeah. Mata paneer is the gadona mm-hmm. in one compartment next to your dain, right? Now, yeah. obviously, when the dain, guys, the yogurt comes, oh it's, my clean, God. it's clean, it's oh. clean and white, right? So, you get, you get the burki, you get your bite of roti, you dip it in the um, paneer. I'm like, oh, this would taste nice with dain. So then you dip it in the dain. Uh, uh, but now the uh, dain uh, is tainted uh, uh. with this orange color. And you're like, yes. Nahi. Yes, it hurts your eyes. <coughs> isn't it? You're like, it's like mixing paint in your food. You're like, what have I done to this poor? And then you try mixing it in to try and like whiten it out. And it just makes it worse. And you're like, I've ruined it. I've ruined it. God, save me, please. I've ruined it. It's true, so, man, it's true. <laughs> but those towels do not help in the Godwara. They really don't. They make things worse. Especially for OCD kids. And I was that kid. Uh, I, I always did like the, 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 you know, the big, the big section. They'd be like three little sections and two big sections. Yeah, yeah, the two big that's, ones. That's yeah, the yeah. I had, right? And the, the, one of the, the two big ones was going to be roti prasada. And, and the, the other, other one was kheer. Kheer, oh. The, and the Guys, thing is, like, because it's right so pudding, big. Yeah. Because it. it's so big, like they pull the key and they just like does this. It just it spreads fills. out a little bit. It just oh disperses. Then, then like, it's like, oh. they're like jalebi. I'm like, yes, of course. And they put the jalebi in the key. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Oh, Girl, it's whenever just you heavy. go to Godwara and you eat longer and you leave, you feel so lethargic, feel so tired because the flipping sugar high you get afterwards is. Immaculate. Which is why they say like, like if you go to you know the, in the purest form of longer. It's very simple. It's prasadda, one dal, mitta maybe like once a month. Now like when we go, it's like, yep, I'll have this and this and this <laughs> and this. And to start, I'll have some pakore, a slice of pizza. <laughs> That's the thing now, isn't it? Like, do, they do like pizza seva as well. Did you go to the Saturday or Sunday? They sell yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. beans and chips and stuff and pizza. Yeah. And the thing is, it's always a tarka as well, isn't it? So guys, yeah. tarka is like a like special Indian spice. And, I uh, say tarka, but yeah, yeah. Jovi, um, if you haven't been to Mr. Singh's, guys, go to Mr. Singh's and like that flavor of pizza is just so different. I actually have stuff. Garen, I've never been. What are you doing Thursday? What are we doing Thursday? We're doing Nando's. Yeah. Um, we could do Mr. Singh's, but okay. We'll save that for another time. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. You can't mix. So the, the optimal way to eat the day is you have the burki and then use a spoon to have, have the yogurt, have the day. Yeah. Or sometimes when I'm feeling a bit like, oh, I want a bit of a challenge, I will dip it in the day, but then the next burki has to absorb all the orangeness of the last one. It's a never Oh, look at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you like want to mix it in? Advanced game, that is. That's, Would you be that's, okay dipping the dal, dipping the day in the dal? Dipping the, no, you can't go backwards. Everything can be dipped in the day, but the day should never be dipped into another thing. No, no, no. 
Absolutely. I mean, that's just put take on my I remember one time as a kid, I told my dad, I said, Mum, Dad, it's too cold. <coughs> and Mum said, Okay. So she got my she she got my day, tipped it in the dark, mixed it up, and said, "Now eat it." And I was like, "Mum, this is like a mix of warm in my mouth, but it's really cold and it's not nice at all." Well, she's like, "You better finish the food." I was like, "Okay." Yeah. Oh, the trauma, man. The trauma. That's danger, but, man. That's danger. But God, worry, man. The 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 level of food just. <laughs> yeah, you're it's right. The best. It's the best. It's, it's so, did Did you it's ever so, go to so God, worry, first thing in the morning? Uh, growing up when on you occasion, go first thing so in the morning yeah brought you can get brought here and they give you brought here with a jar in it and okay. they only give it in the hand they don't have the tiles they give you it in the hand so you have the jar in the middle and you have to work Eat around it yeah. around it it's like an art and then you got it in the end you got to like make like a fajita out of it and just yam it quickly right? yeah so my daddy she still does that like when we're having roti she's like I don't need a plate and she'll, she'll have dal in a kali then she'll have prasada in her hand and she'll just she just does it. Um, well, yeah, we're a bit less advanced than that. that that's, you see, these are all advanced techniques, man. These are all massive advanced techniques that only, that only they know about. <clears throat> oh. Was it Was it you who told me about the uh, moisturizer thing? With, yeah. with um, what is Prashad. it? In, in a good It was you, wasn't it? Prashad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had to dry your hands. It was you, wasn't it? It was you. And yeah, you told yeah, me yeah. that it's because they, they, they need the, a moisturizer in the bin. They don't what? No, it wasn't you. Oh man, I wish I could no, remember. I, 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 no, it wasn't me that, but what I do do, so guys, when you have prashad, which is like, um, um, semolina, it's, it's like semolina, so it's like sacred uh, food that we. It's incredibly it's sweet. Blessed, blessed food. Yeah, it's incredibly sweet, very nice. Um, what I will do if I don't have a serviette is basically to use moisturizer, so I'll just put on my arms and then just. Bro, I wish I could remember who told me this. If anyone's hearing this and then they told me it, please tell me so I can give you credit. But Go on. someone told me the reason why Indian dads do that is because back in the bin, they didn't have moisturizer. And when they go to the Godwara and they'd eat prashad and they rub their hands together, that's moisturizer for them. Hence why they rub it into their face, their beard and everything. And into their hands and into their arms. So I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <coughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense, but you know, it makes sense. Because it's not yeah. really oil. It's... it's um. No, it is oil, isn't it? It is. It is oil, but it is oil. oil. I always think it's butter, but yeah, okay, it's oil. There's probably butter. There's butter in there as well, but there is there is oil definitely. Um, mm. Look, when you're as hairy as this man, like it just gets absorbed. Two strokes. Two strokes all gone. That's it. Straight. Yeah. Then you got that aroma of prashad in your day. Yes. Then Imagine like, rubbing that into your beard, right? You go to work. Yeah, everyone wants going, to eat you. And then in the evening, you're about to go and link a girl for like dinner or something. <laughs> And you're like, shit, I went to Kotara in the morning, my beard's gonna stink of Prashad. <laughs> if she if she's a keeper, she'll appreciate it. She's a keeper That's and she'll test. appreciate, it's man. It's, it's a test. test, but also a very off putting test, man. Imagine that. Mm. That'd be like a girl turning up smelling a torka. Mm, I don't know, man, I don't know. I remember I got into the car once as a kid and I jumped mm. in with my sister and my sister in law. Um so that's my sister's new sister-in-law. Uh, we're about to go see a film. I got in and she said, go and change. And I said, why? She <laughs> said, because you stink of Torka. And I was like, oh, mum we, left the we, door open. Were you when she When she leaves the door open in the kitchen, it just dissipates into the whole house. Right, so here's there's, the there, it's, it's relentless. There is no fuckery with that. It will get into everything. Your yeah. cushions, your jackets left out. Even jackets and covers, it makes its way in there, man. Ventil- I mean, yeah, you need to have great ventilation, isn't it? There's just two things with that kind of house, guys. There's one, I'm seeing that the modern trend now is that people have two kitchens. Essentially, you have your smelly kitchen, which yeah. is this stuff, and then you have like your show kitchen. Jesus Christ, man. How boring <coughs> are they? Have two kitchens, mad. That, that's kind of, or well, they have that kind of setup. It depends cook, on the size cook, of your house, though. Well, you cook <laughs> it, or you cook in the garage or something. Like a lot of people do that type of thing as well. It, just with Torka I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And then the second thing is, yeah, ventilation, man. Like, I know in our house, but to my, it's a dad. He's very tickled about smells. So yeah, if he has a yeah. whiff that mum is cooking, it's so funny. It could be like minus five degrees. He'll go into that room, like three windows, back door open, exhaust on. He's like, yeah, everything's he doesn't open. want it sitting anywhere. No, no, the no, same. no. <coughs> yeah, but the person, the, person, the person cooking in there, I'm like, mum, you need to wear a jacket, man. You're yeah, freezing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mum used to start cooking when I was at work. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, mum, please, can you wait until I, like, I've gone to the gym? She said, Why? 
I say, because I don't want to go to the gym smelling like this. Like, please don't, don't do this to me. And it gets in your hair as well. Like, you know, when they're cooking, I'm like, all right. Yeah. When you're cooking, I'm going to coordinate that with my hair wash day, just so I can wash my hair after. Mm. It's not somewhere where you'd think. Like your hair. Like smell getting into your hair. That's just weird, isn't it? I can't conceptualize that. No, but it's it's real, man. It's real. Mm. It's definitely real. Because when, when you're in the pillow and you're sleeping, yeah, and you roll your head and you smell it, you're like... Oh, Jesus, what is that, man? And you realise it's your hair. Again, I have the added benefit post-COVID of very little smell. No smell. (laughs) I don't don't, don't know, man. How long did that take for you to come back? No, it hasn't really come back. Really? Yeah, I have certain things I can smell. Um, Can you smell coffee? mm, Some strong coffee. I, I can't smell my own farts. Oh, that's a blessing, you know. It is. It, well, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like everyone else can. They're like, you fight. Like, <laughs> I, you know, Shindy's sensor for me fighting is so cute that as it's leaving my body and my conscious brain is comprehending that I'm fighting, it's like, you fight. And I'm like, I don't even have time to process the no, feeling. No, I reckon you fighting. do a little, you do a sign. I think you, you do one of these. For those of you listening by audio, right? Well, you, you know do. how sometimes you like lean to the side and you let it oh, out. Oh no, butt no, cheek? no, no, no! I think he does that. I think he lets it out of one butt cheek <laughs> to suppress it and turn it from a bass beater into a silencer. Bass beater. I no, I don't do that. But like I said, I just don't know. What's, I don't know what's happening sometimes. Well, like I, I realize after someone tells me. So yeah. Do you not miss the smell of like flowers or like scented candles or deodorant? Like I said, strong things. Like when I walked to work, there was a, a house, which like the house is like complete crap. But on the wall outside, there's a lavender plant that grows. Mm. <clears throat> and it's the best part of my walk from the car park to work every morning. I just smell. Okay, so you can heart. smell some things, not all things. Yeah, exactly. And it's just kind of like hit and miss. I don't really know uh, yeah. what it's going to be. Got it, yeah. yeah. Well, Goran, it's Halloween this weekend. So... Uh... Dun, dun. Dan. Question: What Let's is the game. hype with Halloween? Halloween. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, <coughs> Jesus. It's hard, isn't it? Halloween in the UK is an interesting thing, isn't it? Whereas, like, you know, American friends, it's very hyped up parties, all that kind of stuff. We don't really do that. Parties, trick or treating, all that good stuff. Yeah, like growing up, I think we did a little bit. I mean, trick or treating when we grew up was like, right, you're gonna go to your cousins' houses. So only houses you know. And you can trick and treat there. So it's all very planned. And it's all a bit like... Yeah, because they're worried about their kid getting abducted. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, but as in like your parents are with you. But <coughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's a, I get it. It's like absolutely like what if... Because people don't really, you know, keep like sweets and chocolates here like your average person to, you know, receive. So they're like, we'll go to places where we've told your family, told our family that you're coming. So they're prepared and they're going to mm-hmm. give you some stuff and you're going to have a positive experience. <coughs> so we did that like one or two times. Um, last year we got into pumpkin ca- pumpkin carving. I really enjoyed that. Really. So Meher and Shindi did the actual carving. I did the emptying, which mm. like the ar- arduous kind of boring part. But I really enjoyed it, man. I remember being in my banana. All about the banana, man. What about the banana? About the banana. And I had two pumpkins. Had my music on. I was just. Have you ever done this? No, I've never done carving a pumpkin. Oh man! So the just, it's, well, it, just it, the, it the seems quite up. messy. I don't think I'd like it. I don't like mess. Yeah. So hence, hence the banana. What we need is a, essentially I have one tray, which is basically for my crap. The, first you need to make the incision. So you make the chop, you know, on the top, you take out yeah. the thing. And the yeah. inside is, it's, the pumpkin is very hairy and lots of seeds. So then essentially what you do is you take a jump jar, spoon. You just continue to scoop. But by the end, it's such a beautiful thing because inside you've just got it like all smooth, right? Like it just takes quite craftsmanship. And then <coughs> it's for the, like my sister and Shindy, mm. to do the actual making of the face and stuff. But um, but you enjoy really the enjoy therapy it. of scooping out all the shit inside. It's I'm not good at the other bits, so that's my contribution. So I've made myself good at doing that. Um, so we're doing that this Saturday, uh, and then yeah, maybe watch a scary film or something. Not yeah, I never I never saw this like any time we did trick or treating growing up because we lived in like we lived above a pharmacy right growing up, so Dude, it was sort of like a flat. Yeah, yeah. So we used to live above the pharmacy. In the, so you... 
Mum and dad will go to work each day and they just walk downstairs. So dad will go into the post office within the pharmacy. And mum would go right. into the pharmacy body and then we were all living upstairs. Me, my brother, so my sister, five my baby and my papa. Six, six, seven of you? Five of us upstairs. No, Hang on, parents five of us upstairs, but there were seven of us. Yeah, and then my, my baby and papa would sometimes be at mine, sometimes be at like my dias or whatever. Right? How many, how many rooms did you have in upstairs? So I slept at the foot of mum and dad's bed. So we had, yeah. that was up until like I was eight. So we had mum, dad, me in one room. We had a study for like paperwork that was with the business. Then we had, my brother had a room, my sister had a room. We had an attic that was just a dumping ground. Mm. And then we had a room for my baby and papa and that's it. In all this above a pharmacy? This, this is all above a pharmacy, yes. Yeah, so it was quite a sizable <laughs> flat, I guess. But, <coughs> it's the same, huh? yeah. yeah it, I mean, is it a flat? I think there's a certain word for it. Um, a French <laughs> word. Mansion? Like, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a French word. Maisonette, Maisonette. yeah. Is, is, yeah. That, is that the right word? You're the property experts, you tell me, innit? Yeah, amazing it works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's what it was. Now, where was I going with this? Yeah, so we never had ch- trick or treaters or anything because to access the flat, you'd have to go through like a gate on the side door that was always closed. So it's only when we moved house that we started yeah. getting trick or treaters. I'm like, what's this? And I only saw it on TV and I was where, like, oh. Wait, wait, wait. Where you've got a gate as well? <laughs> no, but back then, the gate was like <coughs> a normal opening gate. It wasn't like an Oh, okay, one. okay. And okay. it was always open, we never closed it. Um, okay. So yeah, people will come and do trick or treat, and I'm like, oh, I don't have anything here, and I was like, this is weird. And then eventually, <laughs> over the years, yeah, and over the years, mum and dad had to start stocking, and now we've got electric gates; it's always closed, so <laughs> it's kind of finished now. People are like, please, please, sir, no, never, please let never. us in. But but one thing I didn't like about trick or treating was it gave people an excuse to be a dickhead. So people can like egg your house, so you don't know who it is. Yeah, does that happen though in the UK? Again, I really that happened. That, that happened to me two years running. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, your house was egged. My house was egged twice. Yeah, yeah. In your where we had your party. Yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there. Oh my god, my the house is egged so... because, bro, I went to a state school and they they didn't like me, right? But it was an excuse for them to sort of just egg my house, and they went hard. Yeah, yeah. And Wait, then dad the next knew? day, huh? Was it people you knew? I had a suspicion you? who it was, but I could never find out who it was. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, so they egged the house um, and then dad made me clean it up the next day like it was my fault. I was like, how's it my fault? He's like, it's your, it's your school. I was like, thanks, dad. So yeah, egging of the house became a thing. It just gives people an excuse to be a dickhead in my eyes in the UK. <laughs> um, there was that joke by, what was his name? Doc? Doc, Doc Cotton or something? Okay. Not from fucking EastEnders, but he's a comedian. And um, <laughs> what he was doing... What he was doing was he was basically saying like kids on trick or treat would come up to him and basically ask him for money, and he's like, "Are oh, you meant to ask for snacks?" He said, "No, we just want money." He's like, "So essentially, you're robbing me." That was a gist mm. of the joke, and it's kind of mm. true. Kids in the UK are a bit scatty with it; they're not proper normal about it. They just hate the piss. Mm. But do you remember oh, yeah. a few years ago? Go on. Go on. No. Okay. Do you remember a few years ago how there was that craze of people dressing up as clowns and stepping in front of cars and country roads and chasing people down? Bloody hell, sounds like the purge. It, it kind of was that kind of vibe because there was this thing going around. I think it was when it came out. Yeah. And people, yeah, and they released that on Halloween and people were just dressing up as clowns, stepping into countryside roads and just trying to run towards the car and just playing along with it. And the police had to get involved and try and stop it. But yeah. And there was like a YouTube compilation of it. It was getting a bit out of hand how people were doing it. People are nutty, man. Yeah, it, it just gives people an excuse to do stupid shit because they're in disguise, that's it. Mm. If they didn't have the clown shit on or the face paint or whatever, they wouldn't do, they wouldn't back it with the same energy. Mm. No, mm. absolutely not. What are you doing for Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> at all. Well, in Nothing the flat. <laughs> Imagine Nothing trick at all. for you. What am I going to do in the press, flat? Press the button. Press the button. You have to get through two levels of security to get into oh, the flat. You're, you're, you're so happy. No one's doing that. No one's doing yeah. that. You're going to be yeah. there like, with, with your sniper rifle, arch bow. Waiting for it. As they open the door, <coughs> what the fuck do you want? Right? Hunger, no, no Hunger slingshot games. in my hand. Hunger Games, isn't it? <laughs> Hunger Games, yeah. That's true. Real life Hunger <coughs> Games. I reckon the biggest outfit that everyone's buying this year is going to be the one from Squid Game. Have you, have you seen the outfit? I haven't seen Squid Game too. So there's an outfit that all of them wear and um, it's basically the outfit that the guards wear. Have you seen Money Heist? 
Yeah. No, I haven't seen it either. So in Money Heist, they wear a very similar boiler suit. It's basically a red boiler suit. And in Squid Game, they have like a mask. In Money Heist, they have a mask. They were essentially selling the concept of Squid Game suits to people and saying you can pay it back through Klarna. And the concept of Squid Game is basically, this is not a spoiler, it's people who are in huge amounts of debt trying to make money to get out of their debt. And I was like, this is marketing at its finest. They're making money on a show to sell to people something and say you can pay it back in installments. I'm like, that is so deeply troubling. (laughs) Genius. (laughs) But also Mm. playing up to the fucking role of it. It's a... Smart and also very cheeky and on the nose, isn't it? Absolutely, man. What did you do on the weekend, Scott? Oh, fuck, what did I do? Uh, went out to meet day. a friend from um, school days, Jamie. So he came to the wedding. I met him and his missus. That was cool. Um, that was a last minute plan. And then otherwise, oh, just chill. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie, yeah, yeah. He was at you the uh, shard, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's, a, right. he's, a, he's, a, he's a cool dude. Yeah, he's a nice guy, man. Only guy from school that I kept in touch with. The only one nice to me, basically. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, gonna read between That's the lines. Just there. Spade is spade, the isn't one, it? the, yeah, the one that didn't is. bully me. That's what it is. The kid used to copy my fucking homework at school, and he got better grades than me the whole year round twice. It's so fantastic. He's got that way. He's got that way, isn't he? He's just that smart. James, kid, he's gonna be. An, he's gonna be an MP, man. Like he's, he's got just that smart kid. Nah, he won't be an MP. He hates politics. Yeah, proper hates it. Proper hates it. But yeah, in a nutshell, fuck Halloween, innit? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boogie, me. Uh, milestone birthdays going. I know you're not a fan of, of birthdays. What's the mm-hmm. best way to celebrate a milestone birthday? For someone else or for yourself? Uh, let's do both. So if you were planning <laughs> one for your friend or significant other, probably not significant other, go for like a friend. Hmm. Or say that your friend's partner has got in touch, like, oh, can you help me? Your friend's partner. Oh, okay, yeah, plan it for them. Mm. <clears throat> it's difficult, isn't it? It depends on what they like. So I know some of my friends are very activity based. Mm. And so I'd focus on that. It always, I think for a friend, it will be around a good quality meal at some point mm. uh, and inviting people from the different spheres of their life. Yeah. Uh, whether it be school, university, pangara, whatever it might be. Um, so a good quality meal, maybe an activity. Probably not a holiday in this current climate. Mm, maybe as you get older, maybe like a holiday, a little getaway. Like the one thing stag. I don't like about the meal concept is that you don't get to talk to everyone properly. Especially if it's on like a long table and you're kind of in the middle. You miss out you on conversations with others. You've got to do what you did at your wedding. You've got to float with you just got to move around, work yeah, the table. Have to float. But then the you don't end up enjoying your birthday, do you? It's just like, oh. It's never, it's rather, never, for, it's never for you. I'd rather host it at Yard. And then that way I can just be in my space and then everyone just comes to me and then they go. And then all you've got to do is clean up. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that trade-off because at least there's no loud music. There's no pressure on paying a bill. There's none of that. It's just, yeah, you can just come and go. Mm-hmm. Which is probably a smart way to go about it. But big milestone birthdays, like there's this thing that people were doing. They're going to Vegas on their 40th. Right. right. It's, it's, it's now becoming like a common thing instead of stag going the people I can do my 40th in Vegas come join etc so okay that's pretty cool oh I see okay so it's just an excuse isn't it <laughs> lads isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah lads holidays man uh, girls uh, are doing it as well you know maybe yeah, these girls get for free I, I, everywhere but yeah yeah I don't see it from that perspective and from a guy's point of view but I you know the thing for me is like as I get older like even stags for me are just no, I want to sleep at a decent time. I want to be on my laptop in the morning. Like, you know, I want my coffee. <coughs> I don't want to do these things anymore. Man. Like, it's just... Oh, man. No. Do you know what I mean? I'm I just think, so old at that. I think for you, it depends on the people you're with. Because I know if you were with, like, a group that was on your level the whole way through from person A to person Z, you wouldn't be on your laptop. You'd be like, yeah, I'm happy just, like, chilling and just spending time with you guys. But if you're on a group with like people you may- maybe you don't see very often or are younger than you, you maybe won't vibe in the same way. Mm. It's true in part. I still find time to do it at work. I, I don't see that as a... You know, I don't remember you doing work on the getaways I've been with you. Yeah, there's always a little time. I'll put my laptop. Even on your stag, man, Friday. The yeah, yeah, the stag I, I remember. But I'm on about like getaways mm. I've done like with, with you and stuff. I'm not... 
I don't remember you putting up the cup top. Up north, yeah. Is that you? But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, even when we went with the, the six of us this year, mm. I was doing like medical stuff on the side. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. <coughs> so I always wear pockets, but it's very concentrated pockets. But I don't mind that. Like, that's just... just that's that's what just I how you are as a person, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, just, it's just not... It's not like become disinterested. Um, but you're right. As I get older, it's the, the activities and things we're doing. Like playing... Um, Chameleon Into the early hours of the morning Hours Like That's still a great memory man Like, But you'll make that trade off For the hour, late hours of that Compared to the late hours of going out Drinking Or clubbing Or yeah yeah, yeah That bullshit yeah. Can't even, yeah exactly If it's co- cosy club If we're all cosy Good quality conversation Good snacks Oh I thought you were about Going to cosy club I was like Go on I think nope. you've got an affinity To that place <laughs> <or something>, Right <laughs> um, Nickname for it No no That makes perfect sense I understand that yeah, and then own birthday, oh, man. I'm just recluse, man. Like I just you hate know. birthdays. I'm, I know you're a bad person to ask. But yeah, I don't want to be around people. I just want to be around just family and just. I don't want to fuss. Uh, that's the thing. I don't, I don't like fuss. I don't like attention in particular. What about if you have a kid? Would you do like the big first birthday godwara, second birthday big party cake? Yeah, I was talking to Shindy about this. I'm not really. Again, I don't know. I think my generation is going to be. I'm going to be. <coughs> Private, I would say. So, mm. holding a holding a you know Sukhumani sub part for first birthday, I think it's a very good thing. So, from a part point of view, the daughter perspective, I think I'd still do functions. But from a, let's just have a whole party. My kind of thing would be as they get older. It's like house okay, let's party. Just go on, well, yeah, well, let's go on holiday together. We don't need everyone there. We don't need two hundred people there to celebrate anything. Let's just go on holiday together. That's kind of my... Uh, I like that plan. I, I, I was very lucky, man. My 21st, my 21st birthday, I had a whole party. And the next day, we all flew out to Portugal. Like, I was just spoiled, man. Like, that was wow. Just... Who did you get Portugal? Yeah. So, my fam, the Masi Masir, their kids, mama. Man, that's so proper I... cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's awesome. No one does that. Like, you get a full <coughs> party. That's like a pre-wedding party. Mm. And then you do it the next day. Um, yeah. I get it, I get it. I don't, I don't actually have, like, a way of doing a first birthday or, like, anything like that in mind with a kid. I know that my mum and dad are going to push for wanting a Sukhumi Saab, and I'm like, yeah, fine, I'll give it. Whatever you want to do. The way to get around that going and to stop yourself from running around is you hold on to the baby the whole time. You're like, I can't do anything. I need to hold on to the kid. So To get out of what? Huh? So you to know how what? normally you're, like, running around on, like, a good on a day, and you're like, oh, this person needs that. They're running out of this, you know. The way you stop doing that is just like I've got to be here with the baby. I need to hold on to the baby. No, it's it's not it's not settling with other people. Oh, I need to. Sorry, man, I can't. Like, yeah, yeah, you guys carry on though. Can someone cover me? Yeah, please. Thank you, thank you. That's it. That's it. See, hack the game. That's how you do it. Here's another hack. Then, so my cousin told me she was like, just stop people coming to your house every weekend for the first like twelve weekends post baby to see the baby. Have the Sukhumi Sab apart. Okay? Everybody come one day. Everyone <laughs> see the baby. Don't come to the house. That's it. They fuck off. <laughs> Thank you, boy. Finished. Man. We did the same thing when uh, we bought the house, actually. We stopped people coming to see the house. We were like, right. House bought. We've done nothing to it. Crap is everywhere. We're having a park. Everybody invited. Have a look at the house one day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Install the gate. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Install the gate. That's it. Fuck Install off. the gate. <laughs> What's mad is I know the code to your gate. <laughs> when I come round, I don't even call you. Yeah, I just put the code and knock on the door. They're you're like, like I'm, 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 I'm outside. I'm outside? I'm outside now. <laughs> Which outside? Like the actual door. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, God. We've got fruit flies now in the room. What are fruit flies? Mm. Oh, fruit flies. Them fuckers. Oh, my God. Go and then my biggest pet peeve, man. Mum and dad, when, I'm, when I was living in Birmingham... They yeah. used to keep compost in the house, so like old onions, bits in of like house. fruit, like in the little, in like a little bowl by the windowsill. And you'd attract all these little flies, and I'm like, stop doing it, man, it's getting annoying. And what my dad does, he has this little racket, yeah, and it's like mm. an electrical shock racket, and he like swipes them and he kills all, all, all the flies all the time with it. He thinks it's a game, he loves it. That's a good game. <laughs> it literally has it like like a little racket. Oh, he just goes, and you hear it goes, zzz, and he goes so maybe, happy. Maybe maybe Wimbledon killed us. Yeah, yeah. So happy. <laughs> oh, Roger, mere to se, mere to se kya. Such a kid, man. Such a kid. It's great to see. Oh.
<laughs> what was I going to add? I was going to add. Um, what were you going to say? Okay, so birthday, big birthday dues are, aren't good for you. Mm-hmm. They're not a thing for you. All right, fair enough. Mm. Would you plan one for Shindy then? Yeah, I mean, that's a common thing what we do anyway. Like, you've been to most of Shindy's birthdays. We had a Marvel one, we had Alice in Wonderland one. That was nice. Another one. Like, her, her ones are always good. Yeah. Because she likes that. And I am happy organizing and hosting. That I will happily do, by the way, as you know, mm. like I offered my MC services for your wedding as well. Hosting is my element, man. Make me the host and you will have the best, like the best <laughs> event ever, man. Make me the host and have the best time ever. <coughs> I should offer my services, man. Mm? You should offer your services out. Stop Fair clicking enough. the pen. It's bare annoying. Stop it, stop it. Put the pen down. Put the pen down. Don't click it. It's bad for listening. I hate you, man. Honestly, you, like you that, always you? go over the top, don't you? Every you like time. that. You like those. You push I don't buttons, like it. No, it's ridiculous. Buttons, it? It's yeah. like how if you put a red button on a page, you're you're that guy that will press it, isn't it? Red button page. You're no, like, you're no, like, no, I no, must no. press it. I must press it. No, no, no. There's no compulsion. I only did that because you asked me not to do it. But if it's like an external compulsion, no. Yeah. So therefore, people say don't press this button, and people press it. See, compulsion. Yeah, I'm not. Affili- I'm not affiliated with that. Like affiliated with you. That's reverse marketing, my friend. Inverse. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure yeah. you want to do it. Don't more. press this button. Oh, okay. Yeah, See, yeah. you can't tell me what to do. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those egotistical kids that have a problem being told what they would... That had a problem being told what to do as a kid. All kicks in, man. All kicks in. All kicks in. That's it. All right, safe. We'll call it that. Cool. A solid hour once more. Uh, thank you for listening, friends and family. Uh, pretty, mu- pretty much thinking it's family listening, but it's all good. I don't mind. I had a great time. Go and had a great time building a skill, doing all that good stuff, man. So please do uh, take the time out to leave us a review on iTunes or on Spotify. You can't leave a review on Spotify, actually. Just share it through Spotify. That'd be great. Mm. Uh, and uh, give us a shout of any suggestion topics you want us to cover. More than happy to do it, man. Just need ample time to plan for it. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Probably next week. Okay, yeah, we'll definitely see you guys next week. Later, guys. See you soon, Carl. Peace.